Are we? We're good. We're yeah. live. No. <laughs> we, oh. When you see, I didn't know if when you said we're live. <laughs> that was real. It was a fake. Or just it a was fantasy. a fake. We're live. <laughs> Ooh, dude, oh. I need that card <laughs> just for life. <laughs> yes. What happened? What? I missed something. Nothing. Did I miss something? No. Nope. All right. No. All right. Good. Uh, hey, everybody. <laughs> We're here. We made it. Uh, there were, I'm going to say at least a half a dozen things like trying to uh, not let this happen tonight, but we are here and it's going. Um, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to give any power to those things that were pushing against us, but I'm sure Strahd was one of them. Uh, but here we are. This is Featherfall Tabletop. I am shaking off so much rust right now because it's been two months since I've streamed or played or done anything uh, ever, uh, but we're here. Uh, we'll get some housekeeping out of the way, and then uh, then we'll get into this game. It's session one for our Curse of Strahd, but uh, again, we're Featherfall Tabletop. Uh, we have a couple sponsors. Um, one is Found Familiar Coffee. You can use code Featherfall and uh, check out to save yourself 10%. I don't have a cool, like, gag that Adam does, but, um, you know, just go to Featherfall, get coffee. It's good. Uh, we, are also, we are also sponsored by School Splitter Dice. Uh, you can use Featherfall and check out for another 10% off. You can get coffee and dice at 10% off each. That's 20% off total because it stacks. A couple things coming up on the channel that you should be aware of. One is the there's a one-shot coming on again now that we're out of this holiday season. Those are starting up again. It is the Mask of Worms, and that is tomorrow at 6.30 Pacific time because that's where I'm at. That is DM'd by Bob, and uh, he is uh, going to take us through uh, level one. Level one one-shot. It should be interesting. Plug for those one-shots. If you'd like to be in one, uh, join our Discord. Uh, the link is down below. Get you in there. Uh, let us know that you want in, and we'll we'll hook you up. we got games opening up all the time. Uh, currently, I have a game in mid-March that has a spot left, uh, so get in on that. Uh, Tuesday, the gods we know will be continuing back on their normal normal night uh that is tuesday january 6th check them out uh, again coming out of the holiday they had a special thursday night stream but now they're back on tuesdays i think we will have a, a table talk coming up on thursday january 8th where uh, bob and i uh we will be reviewing the module mask of worms that will be played on that monday so you can uh, hear what we have to say about that and then uh yeah that's 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 this week this coming week. So got a lot of stuff out there for you down to business. This is curse of Strahd. Uh, this is session one and we do have a special sponsor here for this segment on Featherfall tabletop. Uh, this playthrough will be sponsored by uh, roll 20. So uh, give it up for them for letting us use their stuff. So we'll be using uh, roll 20 for this module of curse of Strahd. So we will have uh, handy dandy handouts and maps and all that good stuff that those modules bring you when you get into roll 20. So, uh, check out their digital tabletop uh, games and everything there. Uh, that's at Roll20.net. Any other housekeeping things? We we will do a brief character introduction here before we kind of get into the game. So I, I'm going to go in counterclockwise from top left as I see it in Discord. And just I, I just need you to introduce yourself, uh, where people can find you on the internet if you so want to share that. Tell us your character that you will be playing for Curse of Strahd. Uh, their name, what they what they look like, a general look, and then uh, maybe one one little detail about them that you'd like to share at this early point uh, in the game. And we will start with Cam up in where I sit in Discord in the top left. Cam, go ahead and tell us about yourself. Uh, yeah, I'm Cam. Uh, you can find me <clears throat> pretty much mostly on Twitter, why, where I do everything these days. Uh, at Bearded Baymax, because I'm told I'm a good hugger, so I went with that. Um, yeah, uh, I will be playing uh, Cascada Vendril. <clears throat> he is a uh, water uh, Ganassi. Essentially, um, <clears throat> slightly pointed ears, um, quite long, uh, flowing, greenish-bluish hair that floats at the tips. Um, darker browns also mixed in, kind of like a, a mixture of different kinds of seaweed. Um, <clears throat> fit, but not massively built. He is never seen without his small circlet. I think that's probably uh, the fact I'll go with. It's a small wooden circlet of brown and orange. 
around his head. No jewels, just a simple carving. Nice. Awesome. Cam, thank you. Uh, and give it up, Cam. It's two in the morning where he's at, and uh, I appreciate you for that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's so good. <laughs> Bob, that brings us to you. Where can we find you and tell us a little bit about your character? Well, yeah. I, I'm here at Featherfall Tabletop. Most of the time, I usually DM uh, the Ghost in the Past, but we've kind of put that on hiatus, as Chris mentioned earlier, two months ago. But you can find me at BillyZ6219 on Twitter or at Featherfall Tabletop uh, on Twitter as well. I will be playing Abby Toast, who is a fire genasi. This was not planned, by the way, Cam. I don't know how this... Uh, we got so lucky. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't. It's just pure luck. <laughs> um, he is a druid that has been experimenting with some fire, maybe. Um, and his his appearance is short hair, reddish hair, um, and the only real notable thing that is on me is the necklace that I carry that kind of wraps around my wrist. Nice. Awesome. Thank you, uh, Bob. That brings us to Dax. Dax, you want to tell us about yourself and a little bit about your character? So the only thing you get to know about me is that <laughs> I'm Dax. Um, I'm not on social media, except for Discord. If you really want to find me on Discord, you go to the Open for Adventure server. That's where I spend most of my time. Um, but I will be playing in this campaign Myrna Ellison, who is a bronze dragonborn war cleric. And um, she's six foot two, about 180 pounds, with those bright bronze scales. Uh, two horns that jut backwards make her look very menacing, and piercing emerald eyes. Awesome. I, I'm sorry. I'm having a little technical difficulties. I'm dropping frames. Um, I think that's on my end. Uh, can you hear me okay? Okay. All right. Uh, moving on, Adam, tell us about you. Just you. I. Just me? Yeah. Okay. No. Uh, I'm actually pretty nervous today. I think uh, this is the first time I've played since uh, <laughs> Jen's one shot. Uh, and Dex, I think we were there. Mm -hmm. What am I saying? Anyways, anyway. uh, you can find me at Adama's social media. And then uh, also on Tuesday nights, I am the DM for the gods we know. I will be playing um, Bull Avard. He is a uh, Eldrin an elf subclass and he is a bard he's got you know like uh sandy brown hair he's about five seven so he can you know do all the uh the rope tricks and trapezius and things he's a he's his family is a traveling circus <laughs> are the amazing avards and that is his spiel awesome. he does have a southern accent which i will fall out of quite a bit <laughs> Awesome. Thanks, Adam. Uh, and that leads us last but not least, Jason. So I am uh, at Flesh Myth on pretty much most of your social media sites, um, but I don't really use them other than to follow other people. So don't expect any awesome posts from me if you happen to follow me for any reason. Um, I am playing Tack, who is a changeling warlock. Uh, currently, I am embodying the persona of Zircon Wooding, a uh, calligrapher, as it were. And he's a bit of an older, pudgy elf uh, with slicked back hair and ink-stained hands. I like that, I, the ink-stained hands. That's a, that's a great line. Awesome. All right, that's everybody. That's a, those are. I mean, I'm. I'm. I guess I can introduce myself. I'm Chris. You can find me two socks o five on Twitter. Again, I'm. I'm not a huge participator on there. I mostly just follow people and uh, stalk people. Um, but you can check me out there. You could join Discord. That's where I'd be more active if you want to engage with me on that kind of level. Uh, but that's it. We are, you all are, um, denizens of Daggerford on the Sword Coast. Um, been there for a while you've all been brought there for different reasons uh throughout your time and and adventures and you've all kind of gotten um interactions with duchess marwin the the current duchess of daggerford and she has asked you all to come to a dinner at her house tonight at her uh the manor the uh and she has a, a request of you um so we're gonna start with you all sitting in the the entry hall of uh duchess marwin's 
house. And in front of you are two big double doors that head into the uh, into the dining hall, and those open up, and you are immediately uh, you immediately see Duchess Marwyn standing. She's very tall in stature, and just she kind of commands the room, uh, and, and she is standing there at the head of the table. And as those doors open up, you get um, you get a waft of like a spicy food and a nice um, aroma of what has been prepared for you. And she she says, uh, everybody, come in and have a seat. We will get moving uh, quickly. And so she looks at um, everybody individually, except for you, Bull. You are actually already in the room, and you are in the corner on your little makeshift uh, stage. You have command of the whole end of the room. Um, and you're, you're standing up there, I imagine, uh, just kind of waiting uh, patiently. But uh, this table, I'll just give you a little more description of the room. This table takes up a vast majority of this room. There, there is like a, a walking track around, uh, but otherwise, this table is kind of the centerpiece here. And then Bull standing on his stage in the corner. And again, Duchess Marwin says, "Okay, everybody, uh, come in and and have a seat. Uh, we will get to the uh, the dinner very very shortly. Uh, on on the menu tonight, you will be." Uh, we are having a uh, hot and spicy soup and uh, tenderly cooked pheasant uh, that we will be able to dine on. So uh, enjoy. But before uh, the food is brought out, uh, Bull, you have, uh, you will entertain us. Uh, yes, Duchess. Thank you again for this opportunity. And welcome, esteemed guests. Uh, I will be doing a trick for you all tonight. May I have a, uh, a volunteer? Kind of surveys the room. And you see a hand shoot up of this person that is like full like cloak. They're wearing a mask. It's like, oh, well, right over here. Come on, step on, step on the stage, if you will. And they trot over to the uh, the stage. He's like, up. Oh, right, give me one moment. He walks over to the table and grabs some uh, like fruits and stuff. And just he's like, hold your arms out like this in this uh, scarecrow pose. And he starts putting fruits onto the uh the volunteer he's like all right now um don't move and he steps back and he makes these uh these cards kind of like a gambit if ever anyone has seen x-men cartoons or comics and he starts throwing them at the uh at the random fruit and like one bursts into flames the other like freezes in place and one is just like sliced in half on top of his head He's like, oh, ho, that's that's one we call a, a banana split. And he's just kind of riffing and making dumb jokes. <laughs> um, <laughs> oof. Yeah, at that joke, uh, you see the Duchess kind of hang her head a little bit. And uh, okay, uh, Bol, I will pause you there, and we will. You will have a uh, an encore here in a minute. But uh, people do do sit. Uh, Avi, I saw your hand go up when he asked for a. A volunteer. I did not know you were so uh, open and ready. I, I, I do enjoy a good magic show. Well, uh, I don't know if Bull's magic is good, but it is it is there. But anyways, uh, ha have a seat. Uh, you are seated and indulge and in come a couple of, I don't want to call them servants, servants. Uh, maid staff, wait staff, they come in and they start uh, laying out the spread of food in front of you. Uh, two big uh, roasted pheasants sit at each end of the table and then each of you get your own individual bowl of, of this hot soup. It is it is almost like tomato bisque-like. Uh, there's not... There's no like chunks in it. It is uh, very like a smooth soup, but uh, you, as you are taking in the smell, it is very. Um, you can pick up like peppery spices in there that are uh, quite nice. I I would say. Um, and she. Uh, uh, anybody want to do anything? I'm sorry, I'm doing a bunch of exposition dumps here. <laughs> I'd like to grab uh, one of the uh, waiting staff and just uh, kind of give him a tug and just be. If I go ahead and skip the pheasant, can I just get another bowl of <laughs> that, please? Oh, the spicy tomato soup? You yes, yes, yes. Soup, yes. Seconds. Yes, that's fine. Wonderful. Thank you kindly. It, it, yeah, he, he immediately uh, leaves and goes through the, the doors there and 
getting you a second helping of soup. Um, Duchess uh, Marwin does say, well, uh, you all are in my life for different reasons and have been an aid to me in my my reign here at Daggerford, and uh, that is why I've brought you here. Um, I do need your help there. Um, Avi, you might know this in your time outside of the, the walls here at Daggerford, but there is a group posted up just down the road, and they have uh, been harassing some of the, the, the comings and goings uh, coming into uh, Daggerford, and I have tried reasoning with them. I have sent guards to reason with them, and uh, they have come back unsuccessful. I believe they are using some sort of charm spell or some sort of mystic ways in getting what they want. So I am now enlisting all of you to help me out. They, um, they've been putting threatening people and putting hexes on them, and, and it's just not good business. Um, so I need you all to deliver this message to them for me, that they need to leave, pack up their wagons, and leave the, uh, my jurisdiction here in Daggerford. Um, and I need you to be persuasive not not in a way where you are bending their arms but just uh you know start with the verbal persuasion and then hopefully it will not escalate from there i need somebody that is more um smooth of tongue than uh my uh local guards here um and here's the message that needs to be said if they don't leave before this next dawn their wagons will be burnt to the ground. Um, and I will say, Myrna, I, I would I would like you to be the lead on this as you are kind of my, my number one mercenary. Um, but you will have Tack and you will have Cass and you will have uh, Avi as, as your backup here. Um, Myrna, I don't expect you to be... I expect you to be the muscle, I should say. Is that... Am I fair in saying that? The task most easily to my lighting, Your Grace. Well, that is... Okay, so, Myrna, you are in... Uh, is this anybody here at this table have a problem with this request that I have of you? <clears throat> Not exactly my first way of these kind of things, but... I owe you enough, so I'm happy to take the task. No problems here. Oh, good, good. Uh, Zer Zerka? Yeah, it's agreeable. Fits my skill set well enough. And and again, this does not have to escalate to swords and 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 fighting. It's, I, I would hope that uh, your words enough can be enough to get them to pack up and leave. Um, Bull, were you saying something? Bull's just been pacing or around the stage this whole time and he takes a dagger from like his belt of daggers and chucks it right at the uh the volunteer and it hits him like right in the chest and oh i hit my mic sorry uh <laughs> hits him right in the chest and you, you see the the robe and the cloak just go limp and the mask falls to the ground and he's like not fucking magical i just made them disappear with a dagger that is magic miss and he walks off the stage <laughs> Well, <laughs> I, I, oh, is, does, what, what are you saying? Does this mean you want to, you want to join them? You want to Wait, what? prove what? yourself? No, I don't know if we went that far. And, uh, Bo, Your Grace, you cannot be serious. Yes, Bola is going to join you. No, 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 no. Well, I think you my place is here entertaining you. Bull. Bull. You are going to go. I am, uh... This was uh, one of the last shenanigans I think I can... I can put up with. Well, now, hold on. We can... I can, I can have more shenanigans. That's not a problem. I can come up with them. Like, 
and he. Oh no 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 no! I don't need more shenanigans. <laughs> it's less what? shenanigans. You are interrupt. <clears throat> you, do you remember why you are still here? Uh, yes. Yep, yep. That's all that needs to be said. You will go. And Myrna, I am sorry, but you, you have to take him. Now I can be an asset team. It's not like a, a child out there. Well, hmm. Bull, you are smooth of tongue, and yes, I think in maybe in this case you might be an asset. Or an ass. I'm with that. Well, this is I can why... play a little bit of both. Oh, okay. Uh... If you cause any trouble on this mission, I will sit with personally that you are punished for it and you will not enjoy it. Do you understand? I ran a tight ship and I expect no less from my team. Oh, you should answer her. Now, can we go into the specifics of this type of punishment that you will be doling out? Then, you know, you don't have to answer that. I, I understand. I'll mind my P's and my Q's. Yes. That, yes. Whatever that means, you, you do that. Just behave. Okay. Well. Can you do it, that? Yes, I can. Bull, I knew you could. And Myrna, yes, you make sure he minds his P's and Q's. Um. Everybody, don't don't let this bull's shenanigans and the the task I request of you to be uh, a damper on on the meal here. Um, let's let's enjoy, and we will eat, and then after this, you can make your way to the outskirts of town at, and to their camp. Agreeable? Yeah, I I agree. Indeed. Yes, Duchess. <laughs> uh, and at this point, Cass, there's a uh, that same uh, waiting wait staff that came in and you talked to. He is bringing you a second bowl of soup. Um, while I am here, can I get anything else for any any of you? <clears throat> Everybody is good. He's, he's going to head back. <laughs> <in>. <laughs> He, he heard that as he's going in. And, uh, <laughs> I, I will be right back. Oh, hell yeah. Um, so wh where is everybody seated? How uh, <clears throat> She's at kind of the head of the table, and then there's nobody else on her side, and to her left is Bull up against kind of that edge of the room, and then there are seats around. It's... Okay. I would probably I sit where I could see the door, or at least a few of the exits. Okay. I'm yeah, so you... like middle, somewhere. Right. Considering my scenario, I think I'd probably be closest. So I think I'd probably spent a lot of time with that. So. Okay. All right. And yeah, I would have been as far away as <laughs> politely possible. Politely right. possible. <laughs> so, to her left. Uh, next to Bull is Myrna, and then in the middle, across, almost directly across from the Duchess, is Avi and um, Zircon, and then uh, to her right would be uh, Cass. Um, so you guys are are finishing up your your meal. Any anything you would like, any conversations you would like to have with each other as you are doing this? Feel free to have them. I just have disapproving glances at Bull pretty much the whole <laughs> time. And in that same that, breath, I have approving glances at Bull <laughs> the whole time. That, that is this campaign, is <clears throat> the disapproving and approving of Bull's actions. Who I is think... on Team Bull and who is not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think uh, Cass would probably be 
trying slyly to take a couple of looks at Arvi because uh, Cass actually hasn't seen another Gensai until now. So he's kind of just seen Arvi walk in and is a little bit like, okay, there's more of me. This is interesting. <laughs> Just kind of, yeah, slyly, kind of. Yeah, I'll side-eye you. Like, I'll, I notice <laughs> you're looking at me, but I won't, like, make direct eye contact. I mean, my husband, <laughs> he's staring at me, isn't he? <laughs> Perfect. It, Avi, uh, Cass, is there something that needs to be said? Uh-oh. Nope, I'm, nope, all set. Nope, nope, absolutely fine. Nothing to worry about. Well, then. Well, I just did have a question. So you did say you've sent multiple guards? Well, you all know the kind of the lackeys that sometimes <clears throat> guard these walls, and they're not the brightest of minds. Um, but they, they, they went, delivered a message, and came back and were almost enamored, in love with... Uh, but not dead, right? But they, No, they were not dead. Um, they did come back singing the praises of, of uh, a standing man. Did they uh, say a name by chance? Yeah, his name is a standing man. Um, he, is, he is the one that is the most charming, I would assume. He is the most. Standing ear? Standing, no, no. S T A N I M I R. Standing ear. I M I R. Uh, he he has been the point of contact um, every every hmm. time. So. And uh, Myrna, you say you do this often. You go on these missions for the Duchess. I have gone on some missions for the Duchess. We oui. um, and for others. Why? You don't. Well, I mean, you don't like kill people, right? Does that pose a problem for you? No, no, I'm just I I just don't want to die. That that's my main goal. Then stay away from the pointy end of my sword. Well, if we're on the same team, it's why would a I? Simple solution. It, it, yes, it is simple. But we're on the same team. Why would? Don't, just don't point your sword. Then you have nothing to worry about. You just follow my orders, and I can do that. Be... And with that, you see like this broad grin of sharp teeth. Anyone else have any problems or questions with my authority? Nope. Hmm? I would much rather be on this side of the sword, thank you. <clears throat> well... Your Grace, yes. tell me, how long have you had this uh, problem with these uh, marauders, these bandits, whatever you would like to call them? It has been long enough that they have been um, a problem. So I would say at least a week we have been getting reports of people coming in saying they were uh, accosted and threatened and they were demanding money and wine. So it, is, it has been at least a week. Hmm. That is quite troubling. I... And uh, how many people have you lost in a week's time? Well... Oh, wait, no, they all came back. In back, it's just that they were, like I said, in, in almost in love, enamored with this this gentleman and and the rest of his crew. Huh. So I that's why I have enlisted all of you uh, for your different skill sets. Uh, I, I think <clears throat> that you have to to turn up the heat a little bit. Um, that's a joke for Avi. Uh, um, <laughs> times you have to maybe put the thumb down just a <laughs> little bit more. Um, and that's what I need all of you to do. Bowl included. Quick question. As one of or her only alchemist, would I have treated any of these people? Uh, you've probably seen some people coming in just with... Um, like a 24-hour bug where they they seem like all all they can talk about is this man and, and the stories he tells and okay 
and the fact that they gave him you know the the coins that they had on him and you should you should go see them or you should be like you should hear these stories so yeah you've probably heard some some rumblings and maybe you know gave some people some bed rest <clears throat> um, okay but nothing uh that would be totally out of the ordinary or or not heard of before Good to know. as far as like a, a simple charm person kind of spell now as one of her only entertainers would i have tried to charm any of these folks or hypnotize them uh the people that came back and already being charmed yes yes <laughs> um these are more just like the general denizens of daggerford so not any of her royal court that would would be uh, uh garnering a meeting with her so i unless you what you do in your uh, downtime um but not not in her home specifically. Okay, if that makes sense. Any any more questions before I send you? This, uh, we are we are about to wrap up. Did you say this pays? Well, um, I mean, clearly some of it. It sounds like some of them owe you something. Well. This will pay above and beyond um, any normal duty pay that you, you now receive from me. That's fair. Details and specifics can be talked about on an individual basis. Very well. Okay, well, with that being said, I am. Uh, she picks up her napkin out of her lap and. and uh, cleans the corners of her mouth and sets it down and stands up. I, I will send you on your way. Um, please do report back as soon as you figure out something. Um, and again, I will burn their wagons down if they do not leave. And she, she gets up and, and heads out one of the, the doors. Not the double doors that you came in, but there's a door, set of doors behind her that the wait staff had been going in and out. And she leaves the room. While I do enjoy a good fire, burning their wagons may be a quick escalation. Did she leave with, like... Is it, is it just us and left in the room? or? Is yeah, and there's, like... there's some wait staff coming in and kind of cleaning up the table and, and tidying up a bit. <clears throat> okay, I think Bull's going to go over to, like, her area and kind of eat what she was eating on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, because you weren't you weren't an official guest at the dinner table, so yeah, you are yeah. getting... Um, yeah, you're you a little hungry. She does pick the bones pretty clean, uh, so there's not a whole lot left <laughs> on on the uh, kind of the carcass of a pheasant. It is... Uh, I would like to thing. grab Bull by the scruff of his neck and pull him away <laughs> from the plate. <laughs> Oh, hey, hold, hold on. Hold what do you on. think you are doing? What do you well, think you are doing? We're about to go on a, a lengthy walk, I'm assuming. I want to get, you know, some protein in, uh, maybe a So you wish wine. to lick the plate? Uh, like well, I, I didn't realize that it was, it was she picked the, the bones clean also like a dog. But... Uh, I'm going to grab like a roll <laughs> and just shove it into Bull's hands and be like, is that... Let's go. He does a little half bow. I'm like, oh, thank you. And just bites into it. <laughs> like uh, a poo in Aladdin. I guess the monkey in Aladdin. I guess what would be a poo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Well, one in the same. <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, we're, Myrna, did you say you were heading out? Well, I just said let's go. I, okay. I'm kind of waiting to make sure everybody else is going to you know, skedaddle. <laughs> uh, what's everyone else doing? That would be uh, Zircon and Cass. I'm gonna kind of just reluctantly. Uh, I'll push my plate. <laughs> You'll push your way out. Is that what you said? You you would be the closest to the was, door that you came in. Yeah, yeah. I just push my plates further away from the edge of the table. Uh, food almost entirely untouched, um, and set my my napkin down and uh, walk away from the table. Headed 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 outside. Okay, is uh, is everybody following? Reluctantly, but yeah. All right. I'll Drag get up. Feet a little bit. 
but I'll follow behind Cass. Well, to make sure it. Cass is not in yeah, front. Well. <laughs> All right, you guys. Yeah, you. In your marching order, you head out. You exit <clears> the, uh, the manor of Duchess Marwyn, and there is a, a cool kind of autumn breeze that is in the air. It kind of. Uh, it was rather warm in 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 her house, um, and as you come out, it's like. Ah, it's kind of refreshing a little bit on your skin. And you're heading out towards the town, out the gates, and you do see, uh, in the distance, you do see um, a campfire <clears throat> in the distance down the road from the main gates of Daggerford. How far out of the gates would it be? It's probably about uh, 200 yards. And this is like dusk? dusk? Uh, the sun has fully set. It is... Uh, you can see the moon kind of coming up, but it is it is a dark night, so you can see that, that fire is illuminating um, anywhere from like 6 to 12 kind of bodies. You see the silhouettes kind of moving in and out of the, of the firelight there. Is there any lighting on the street or walkways or anything from the manor out, to out. said campfire? Um, as you've left the manor and you're like in the streets of Daggerford, you go through the front gate and then now you're on the main road, the main thoroughfare. That so you're outside of the city gate. So there are okay none, none lanterns. Uh, are you all heading that way? I suppose so. Cass is just kind of going to be sticking with the group. <clears throat> Again, not thrilled, but has to do what he has to do. All right. As you guys approach, uh, I'm, we have our first handout. Uh, as you guys are approaching, you do see this older gentleman uh, sitting at the fire nursing um, a wine skin. He's, he's taking uh, swig after swig of that. You see uh, four or five other people kind of dancing together, sharing their wine skins. And then you see there are three like half barrel kind of big caravans that are around the campfire, like the backside of it. And you see there are six large draft horses that are kind of tied up and they are, um, I, I, I don't know horses, but they don't have their... Uh, their saddles or their reins on they are kind of you know down for the for the night i would say um and you just see there there are about 12 people here that are just enjoying the libations and the campfire and um that you can tell uh how close are you guys wanting to get i'm gonna stop super close yeah i was gonna say i'm gonna (laughs) stop and look at myrna and say so uh what's what's the plan you're in you're in charge here yeah the Christ also suggested we have someone who can spot a uh, silver tongue, and that is not exactly my strong suit. Well, I, think... I can be the muscle, but I will need a little assistance convincing them before we get to that step. Do I have any takers? I think Bull is probably the best. No, no other. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, at this point, it's like using his dagger and drawing in the in the dirt, like a, a rough sketch of their camp. He's like, "Oh, wait, hold on. Were we were we game planning? I'm talking, I'm talking. I, I can talk. I can. Yeah, no, I, we need we need somebody to talk to them. And I think, we yeah, address. yes, I agree. Uh, all right. Um, you said they were listening to music, or like they're dancing around. Yeah, they're dancing. Uh, there's one person there playing a, a little lute. Um, mostly, it's not very musical, but they're um, making their own kind of rhythm and fun and, and enjoying each other's company. Okay. Um, say Bull will will walk towards them and he'll use prestidigitation to, like, do faint musical notes to, like, supplement the, the lute playing? Or... Why is he going out already? We have not finished playing. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait! Is that not? He, he, he turns back as he hears you. Is that not what we discussed? Just go. You are already just go. Well, now hold on. And he oh. turns back. Now hold on. I, I, I'm trying to be a team player here. Let me. How loud are you talking? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna ask uh, the same thing. How loud are you talking? Yeah. Can do I notice them listening at this point to what we're doing? Uh, how how close are you guys? Let's. I would have stopped far enough away from the firelight, but yes. I don't know about the rest of them. <laughs> I, I was with Myrna on this. Yeah, I think we're all together. 
right. Um, yeah, I'd say they 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 have not broken from the activities that they have been doing. Okay. Um. So that your plan is to enhance their music. Uh, well. The idea was y'all were gonna snake around, um, and then while I distract them, and then I lay out an ultimatum, they'll be like, oh, you're just here by yourself. I'll be like, oh, am I? And then y'all pop out. Is that not how, how we it thought this was gonna play out? It would have been ahead of time. That, I remember us distinctly talking about this. I even drew a thing, and he points to his map on the ground. <laughs> Speak, you have to open your mouth and say words. Maybe this was a bad Both idea. Both of which you did not do. Perhaps this one should be the one to talk, no? Maybe. He seems smart enough. Wait, who? You. You? <laughs> That's not a good idea. I don't like people and people don't like me, so... So why did... <clears throat> Never mind. <clears throat> it's complicated. It's fine with this plan. Is this acceptable? I guess. Or should we all just have a show of force? Well, let's try him first, because if <laughs> if he fails, we can just try and go a different way, yeah? This fail. And uh, Adam went, so Avi's going to reach out and touch Bull, and uh, I'm going to give you guidance. Please don't ruin. <laughs> don't kill us, <laughs> session one, please. <laughs> Uh, is, is that what you're saying to him? <laughs> <laughs> as you as you reach out and touch and touch bull, he says, "Hey man, um, you're gonna do great out there." And he gives you a bardic inspiration and taps you on the shoulder. I, I'm not I'm not doing anything. Okay. Hey, well, <laughs> yeah. we had a plan, all right. We, <laughs> do you not remember? I do. I'm with you. I will flank around. And we'll this will work. Where? I'm going to just look up at the next guy and say, No other please. Do not let me die like this. Please. And then I'll uh, go in one direction or another. <clears throat> Maybe where there are not other people. <laughs> yeah, so they they have there's the a road that travels north and south and they are on what would be your left, kind of the wagons are horseshoe behind them and then the fire is up next to the road continue on the road and you would cross through their firelight and that's kind of was their mo they've been harassing people that would walk by or you can circle around uh, yeah i kind of want to circle around the top of it so i don't i don't cross them on the road i just circle the top okay uh you doing that stealthily uh yeah i would be uh, give me let, let's 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 roll Give me, uh, whoever... Yeah! If you, you can give me stealth checks. It's a 19. It's a 19. You know what? Maybe it'd be better if I just stayed where I was. <laughs> stealth <laughs> checks. Oh, not now. Alright. I mean, so if I you wanted to look like... <clears throat> you could always look like his, uh, his bodyguard. That could always work. I like that idea. Alright, I'm gonna follow Bull. But I'm not gonna tell Bull I'm following him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see how good he is. Uh, Zircon and and Cass, which way are you staying? I'm gonna go ahead and sneak around the side. Okay, with uh, with Avi. Uh, are going, or are you going the other way? Is that a good idea? I don't know. Yes. Yeah, go on then. All right. <laughs> yeah, go on then. Yeah. All right, so go ahead and give me give me a stealth check. A fifteen. And then uh, Zircon, are you where are you gonna post up? I'm going to just follow very slowly behind Myrna and Bull. Um, Even I'm not trying to sneak anywhere, but it's it's very much just kind of the, I want to be in earshot when this all falls apart, but I don't actually want to be confused for being involved <laughs> by the people up at the fire. <laughs> it's a killer plan. <laughs> all right. Um, so dead. Avi and and Cass, you you are heading off, kind of in the shadows, staying in the um, out of the firelight, and circling around. Bull, you are headed forward, and about sixty feet um, is when you get to where you step into the firelight, and you now are creating a shadow with um, Myrna right behind you, and 
Zircon further uh, behind Myrna. Uh, okay, and with a so I have a passive perception of thirteen. Would I uh, know that either of them are walking behind me? They can give stealth checks, and we can see <laughs> if uh, fine, fine. All right, stealth checks at disadvantage. Is at disadvantage. Oh, I rolled both were a seventeen. Go figure oh. that one. Oh. So, yeah, Myrna, you are you are uh, I, noticed. Zircon, what did you roll? Fourteen for me. Fourteen. So no, uh, Bull, you don't. You're kind of uh, you, um, you're kind of focused. Uh, you know, cow with the blinders on. You're oh, yeah. game planning in your head, and you don't notice that in you have people <laughs> following um, next to you. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll use Preston to chase. Prested education, and I'll like start playing some musical notes to supplement their music, and I'll pull out like a wine sack and kind of spill a little bit on myself, and start to like, like uh, jazz jazz into the light uh, a little bit closer. Uh, how, and are you, how close are you getting? Uh, about thirty feet from the fire is where the ring of people are kind of dancing. So you got. From the moment you stepped into the the ring of fire, you have thirty feet in front of you. Uh, you I mean, to encounter people. I'll I'll get to about thirty feet away. From, well, I mean that's just me knowing stats. I, I'll get about twenty feet away, and I'll be like, uh, if they don't notice me at this point, I'll be like, well, hail and uh, and well met, folks. How are we doing tonight? <clears throat> and in front hey, of you, you what? you see a couple that are like locked in arms and they're kind of dancing in a circle and uh the woman lets go of her partner's arm and comes trotting up to you and is like join us for a dance and she is she has her arm hooked and ready to like get you in the uh and to do a spin all right well well i can't uh, refuse an invitation like that you and better I'll not take, i'll take her arm and i'll start drinking and like dancing with her <laughs> So you do one spin, and then she's now escorting you uh, closer to the fire. Come to the fire and join us. And she passes. All right, well, what's your name, well, lady? Well, miss? Uh, That's all right. You don't have to tell me. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do have a name. <laughs> my my name is Damia. Join us. Oh, Damia, that's a lovely name. I, I will join you. Is there a... Uh, Who's uh, who's putting on this party? Can I? Oh, my father, Stanimir. Who are you? These friends behind you. Come and join us too. Have a drink. Sit by what? the fire. I don't know that I have friends that, behind me. They're right there. The two of them. They look shy. Oh well, I I happen to have come by myself. I'm I am not no. shy, as you can see. Oh no no, Rot Rotka, and she turns to the the man that she was dancing with. Please bring them closer to the fire. And this man is now making his way towards you, Myrna, and uh, Cass. And I will throw a, a hand up and say, I, uh, I do yeah. not need an escort. Please back off. And well, I'll walk closer to the bowl. You see his face kind of like the smile and the, the, like the crow's feet that were around his eyes immediately just go smooth. And he's looking at uh, Zircon. He's, uh, you join us uh, by the fire. I'll, uh, I'll approach with my hands behind my back. Um, not, not like concealing anything, but just kind of walking with, with my hands held together behind my back. And saying, ah, uh, I'm with her. And I will just slowly follow where Myrna goes. Well, I, will, I will save the dance for the two of you. And he does like a, does a quick jig around around you and heads back towards the fire. Please stop, stop acting so foolish. Go back to the fire. Go, go. We are having a good time. Father, will you welcome our, uh, you guys are friends now. Have a seat, drink some wine. And he leans down into like a little uh, wooden crate and pulls out two wine skins and starts to uh, hand them to you. One to you, Bull, and then um, <laughs> Myrna, as you are the closest, he's no wine. Uh, and then he'll look at <laughs> Bull will accept. Zerka. Bull, <laughs> he doesn't know your name. Here, take both. Uh, and he starts to dance back, and he kind of goes back behind. Definitely father. accept wine. I, I put my uh, hand on Bull's shoulder at this point. Do not drink that. Okay. 
And he <laughs> all looks back to you and like puts his hand on your hand. He's like, I'm just trying to fit in here. <laughs> so as this is happening, uh, Avi and Cass, what are, what are you two doing as you're kind of looping around? I'm going to turn to Cass and go, um, what? This doesn't look like the plan we talked about. Doesn't look great at all, but uh, worst case scenario, we all die. No more shenanigans. Best case scenario, we get this over and done with, and we don't have to deal with the bot. That, so, I, that, that is true. So <clears throat> do we stay out here or are we moving in? Let's wait a minute, I think. See if it get, the situation gets any worse. If it does, then perhaps move in and do the uh, show of force that Myrna was talking about. Yeah. Um, and so what? what's around us out here? Is it like tall grass? Is it trees? Yeah, there's there's uh, the there are trees. It's not like a dense forest, but you do have knee high grass. There's some uh, lower underbrush, and then there are some trees dispersed throughout. You are in the shadows uh, outside of the camp or the the fire ring of light. So yeah, there there are plenty of things that you could hide behind if you need to. Well, uh, I guess you pick a tree. I pick a tree, and we'll just watch for a minute or two. Yeah, sounds good. And so I'm just going to hide, hide behind a tree and just watch. Okay. Yeah, we'll use your same stealth checks. You guys are, you guys are pretty good. Um, the, the old man, the, the man from the handout, uh, is kind of sitting behind the fire. And he's, what brings you down this road? You heard about our wine. And he's looking directly at you, Bull. Oh, uh, no, I, I didn't really hear about the wine. I was just leaving uh, town back there, and I, fortunes may have it, I stumbled upon this uh, soiree, so uh, are, are you the one the host? Oh, I, I, if you mean the elder, then that is a yes, but we just don't need a host. We all have fun regardless. No, you... well, I, sorry, well that sounds mighty nice. My name is, uh, Bull, uh, this is my associate, uh, Myrna. Myrny? Myrny? She, uh, well, I mean, we didn't, haven't known each other long, but we're thick as thieves at this point. Uh, what's your name, sir? I am, uh, I am Stanimir, and you have met my daughter, Damia, and my son, Ratka. And these are the rest of, uh, our traveling band. And that you see several other people kind of around that kind of stop dancing and tip their hat and acknowledge your you being there in the camp. Oh, fellow travelers. I, I uh, right. perchance heard of a, a traveling circus known as the Amazing Avon. I used to be a part of that troupe. Uh, Can't say I have heard of it. No, that's all right. Well, we don't make it outside too often. What? Sit, though. You, uh, you guys are standing and making me uncomfortable. Oh, uh, uh, what about Bull the one sits down. Oh, good, good. What about the one behind you? Uh, uh, Myrna and Bull, and then there's a gentleman behind you. I'm Zircon, and unfortunately, I think our purpose here is to make you uncomfortable. So I'm going to stand. No! Why would you be uncomfortable in this moonlight when we have wine to drink and fire to dance around and music to hear? I'm plenty comfortable, but we're we're here to ask you to leave. You want me? Yeah. I think you cut out a little bit. I'm going to assume you said leave. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Ah, uh, you want me to leave? Why? You're. This is a comfortable camp. You are comfortable, and we are sharing drinks together. There's no reason to leave. The Duchess has requested it. You're camped on her land, and. Bothering her citizens, as it were. If uh, if this is bothering, sharing a drink and uh, a seat, and I don't, this Duchess, you say, you've been plenty is pleasant a... to us. You've been plenty pleasant to us. I will certainly agree. However, there have been reports from others uh, a little less pleasant, oh, as it were. I mean, at some point the wine runs out and you've got to make a run for some more. That costs money. But it is not our, our goal to be 
making enemies of this lady, uh, the Duchess, you say. <laughs> that is not our goal, but rather to tell stories and to have a good time. Would you... DM? Yes. Oh, go ahead. No, go no, ahead. Go. Finish your thing. I was going to say if, uh, would you like to hear a story while you are sitting here and being, uh, comfortable? Why, uh, yes. <laughs> I knew you would. Bull, bull. We are going to be friends, Bull. I can tell. We do not have time for stories. Bull, stand up. Act a man. Well, now hold on. This is an elderly, Stand elderly up. cat. Oh, pouting, stands up. <laughs> Fine. DM, how much smoke is he blowing up our ass? Uh, you want to give me a, an insight check? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I would like to do that. <sighs> that is a 22. Nat 20. Oh. Let's see if I can do a, do a check myself. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, no, you tell. Um, are are you looking for anything specific, or just if he's if he's? I'm not? looking at um, facial changes. I'm looking at body posture and tone of voice. I okay. want to see, you know, are there any changes that would indicate that he might be hiding something? All right. Uh, he is he's very comfortable in this situation, and um, you can tell he's he's on the edge of inebriation. So it, maybe that's some of the the looser body language and the open arms that he's giving you. Um, but he has not said anything that would be untruthful. Okay. Uh, th there's there's something about him though that is I don't want, I don't want to say off putting, but is just he's almost too comfortable. It ain't right. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, so, uh, Bull, you said you wanted to hear the story. I will tell it. It only takes one to agree. Oh, God. Beautiful. Oh, okay. Am I in earshot of this? Give me, give me perception check. If uh, he he is being loud and boisterous, but you guys are kind of on the the outer edge. Six, so. This is sixteen. Yeah, I'd say you're, you're picking up what he's putting down. You're, you're hearing what he's saying. In, not not Bull or Myrna so much. You can't just hear Stanimir. their responses. But yeah, you can hear Stanimir for sure. Okay. He is being pretty verbose. Uh, so he, he uncorks his uh, wine skin and he does fill his mouth full of wine. And he, he turns to the fire and he spits it all out into the fire and the flames turn from what is the natural orange and red into uh, this this acidic kind of green swirl. And they start to dance and sway and in the middle of this fire appears this dark shape uh, rising up from the, the, the hottest part of the fire, rising up right in the middle. And he says, we have come from an ancient land whose name is long forgotten, a land of kings. Our enemies forced us from our homes, and now we wander these lost roads. And at that point, the dark shape in the fire uh, takes the form of a man. Uh, it was kind of just this kind of amorphous shape, and now it's in the shape of a man being knocked from a horse and, and a spear coming from. Uh, Boy, you can kind of feel it swoosh by your head. And it, as that swoosh kind of comes forward and manifests into the fire and spears this this figure that is there, um, nothing, nothing physical, nothing catches fire, but it is just kind of a, a change in the atmosphere a little bit as the spear comes in and now uh, pierces this figure that is in the middle of the fire. And Stan Stanimir uh, continues on. Uh, One night, a, a wounded soldier staggered into our camp and collapsed. We nursed his terrible injury and quenched his thirst with this same wine you are drinking tonight. He survived. When we asked him who he was, he wouldn't say. All he wanted was to return home. But we were deep in the land of his enemies. We took him as one of our own and followed him back toward his homeland. His enemies haunted him. They said he was a prince, yet we didn't give him up. 
even when their assassins fell upon us like wolves. Deep in the bonfire, you see the dark figure now is standing with a sword drawn, fighting off hosts of just shadowy shapes that are like just pummeling him and, and coming one after the other. And he's putting up this fight. Um, Stanmere continues, this man is of royal blood fought to protect us as we protected him. We bore him safely to his home and he thanked us. He said, I owe you my life. Stay as long as you wish, leave when you choose, and know that you will always be safe here. The figure in the dancing fire vanquishes his final foe, then disperses in a cloud of smoke, and, and as he kind of um, disperses, it, it's like a tornado of smoke comes up and kind of some ashes and sparks kind of sprinkled down like a firework. And Stanmere's face at this point, and... Uh, Myrna, sorry, I'm still learning all the names. Myrna, you see his face. Uh, it does change a tone. He was kind of jovial and laughing and boasting, but now it's like almost somber. A curse has befallen our noble prince, turning him into a tyrant. We alone have the power to leave his domain. We have traveled far and wide to find heroes such as yourselves to end our dread lord's curse and put his troubled soul to rest. Our leader, Madam Eva, knows all. Will you return to Barovia with us to speak to her? And he's looking at Bol. And as he's looking at Bol, you do see his eyes kind of glance up towards Myrna, as you two are the closest with Zircon kind of, I imagine, being just off the side there. Uh, and he, he is that somber face, Myrna, that you're definitely catching on. Uh, and he's, he's kind of looking at Bol, looking at, at you, Myrna. Since finishing that story, Bull's like, <laughs> "Well done, sir. That I'm, I took notes, and I am going to use that in the future." Um, I mean, I don't know if that's what we were specifically sent here for, but if it gets you to leave, I mean, well, yeah, let's let's do that. We could go to Barnavia. No, Barovia. Yeah, that's what I said. Our our, our master is in need of help. While we are here having fun, we have been sent to find all of you and bring you back with us. And I imagine this will... We will do right by your duchess and we will leave. So but let me get this straight. You have been sitting here for a week, supposedly looking for heroes to save your cursed leader. I, I don't believe you. Uh, Why would you be sitting on your... Why? Why are you sitting around doing nothing? Sometimes uh, the they come to you. Mm. The stars aligned and you were brought here. So I think we have the Duchess to thank and for that we will leave. You, you, all of you, your services are needed to help our Lord. This wasn't part of the plan. Uh, I, I agree, should we? Join them. I mean, they're they're either gonna leave without us at this point. I'm not. I'm. 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 I'm not feeling this. But <clears throat> I guess we've got to do the job. Yeah, I want to get paid, but <laughs> yeah. And I'll walk forward into the, the the light around the the fire. Okay, guys. We've done far worse than this. Let's go. And I just walk forward slightly behind him. All right. Yeah, you guys are coming in on the edge of where the uh, the wagons are. So then you break from that uh, cover and you enter that firelight. And, and what was once dancing people, they are now kind of like taking on the same tone as Stan Amir. And uh, they do catch your eye and... Oh, you have come to share wine with us as well. Well, we came to m make you leave, but we are a party with these three. And at that stand, Amir kind of turns, oh, and looks over his shoulder and catches uh, eyes with you guys. Yes, you you have been chosen too. Both of you. I don't buy it. 
Sorry. You don't stories are just stories. That's all they ever are. The mystery and the intrigue leaves as soon as you read the last page. I don't buy it. Well, I am... That is a great uh, metaphor that you use, but the uh, the last page has not been written. The story is a set of new characters, and that is the five of you. Can can we have a moment to discuss that have oh. away from playing? Is there, is there payment involved for saving your lord from his curse or whatever? <clears throat> You will, sometimes the payment is more, not in a monetary value, but in a, uh, I don't want to say notch on your belt, but it is something that you can carry with you forever, knowing that you did something right for people that are uh, weaker than yourself. So, no. <laughs> That's what I got. We, what I... we have wine. We have horses. Do you, you I mean, so you can like, leave. You have all the stuff you will, need to leave then. The, the horses, the wine. You can go and I can get paid for your leaving. We are in need of your assistance. And that is why we are here. We'll find Barovia a welcoming place and a place that will have payment that you may seek. I was interested. Do you eat the horses with the wine? These are not food. Oh, we well, have, you we said you had wine. wine and horses. Well, yeah, it it al is almost like a status symbol. Having the horses. Uh, your is, is it like a table decoration? The horse. Yeah. I don't. I. Your friend here asked for a moment to speak amongst yourselves. That's I probably will. a good idea. Yeah. But I want to. I want to circle back to this horse question as soon as we're done, though. Mm. Oh, also, is the horse on the table for payment? Uh, you said we have wine and horse, so I mean, we'll we'll take a horse <laughs> or horses. Well, uh, the I let's come back to this. Pin that table. That I'm going. Because I am so confident, and I know your answer, I'm going to start packing up. We will bid this place adieu. And he's he's going to kind of back away from the fire. And you see um, his his two kids, um, the the male and the female. I forgot their names. Ratka, uh, and, Ratka and Damia. They they join him, and they start uh, loading up kind of some of the the stuff that they have out and about, dead rolls and, and other things, rations and such. And they're kind of going about their business. So you do have a moment here. So, Myrna, I, I mean, I'm going to take your lead on this, but uh, it sounds like we could just say we're going to go, they leave, and then job done, right? It is my problem with that plan. So I mean, yeah, if they, if they leave, we can go back to the Duchess and... Winning, winning, win, win. It is not exactly in my nature to say no to those that need help. Um, I have other reasons other than my nature for that, but that is beside the point. Well, you're, you're captain on this uh, vessel. I also do not command my companions, as you are not under mass service. Do what you do not wish. I, I think it... I think if we can get the horse, I'm in. Why do you want the horse? See how expensive they smell. You have to clean them every night. Well, I mean, you can also sell a horse for a good amount of coin. And if we're already talking about double dipping, you might as well triple dip. You could eat a horse. You do not want to eat a, a horse. The meat yeah. is tough. Well, You've done it. It's not good. I have. Yeah. Well, there's that old saying, you could eat a horse, but if you teach a man to horse, then yeah. <laughs> he'll never go hungry a day in his life. 
look, the way I see it is that they are leaving. We have done our job. Um, as long as they are gone before the money, the Duchess will also hold our payment until we come back. It is up to you. I may assist them. I do not quite trust them. But I also cannot, on my conscience, say no. Well, you took charge, I'll, I'll follow you, I suppose. Horse or no horse. Preferably horse. I, I'm also in the horse boat. Very well. And I'm going to slap Cass on the shoulder and say, I'm glad you made that choice. Thanks. We're going to be friends. I can feel this. I see. I don't know what, Indeed. what that got me into, but... <laughs> We had a moment out in the out in the field that you guys didn't see. Well, that is nice. Uh, Bull. <clears throat> yes. You did not drink the wine, did you? Uh, I mean, I might have had a sip. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't drink to excess. <laughs> I, it's only. I mean, I didn't want to be rude. You planning to go? Uh, I mean, yeah, I can tag along. I don't. And if I say don't eat or drink anything, that means you. Don't Drink or eat. Well, I, wait, hold on. No, we're not uh, just saying wait, you didn't. Uh, you didn't command your your people. So we, this was a done. <laughs> some sort of like a democracy. <laughs> I try to treat my people fair in their own conscience, but if I am giving you a direct order for your safety, that means you must listen. All right. For right. oh, my safety, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I got you. Just think of it as babysitting, because that is essentially what it is. I'm going to give Cass like this look like Have Have we come to a conclusion? We'll do it for the horse. <clears throat> you can have the horse. Yes. But we have Huzzah! to Huzzah <laughs> That's it, that's Curse of Strategy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got the horse. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was a DM. Campaign's over, we won. <laughs> if the players get a horse. No, I'm kidding. Um, uh, seeing that it gets us to Madame Eva and Barovia, you can have the horse at that time. Upon completion, I would assume, yeah. Uh, yes. That's fair. <clears throat> well, if you wouldn't mind helping us pack up, we can get this caravan underway. Um, I don't know if we agreed to all that. I think we, we're going to escort you to Provovia. <laughs> so, can you say that one more time? Uh, Provovia? Provovia. Provovia. How did you say it? Barovia. That's how I said it as well. Well. Thank you. It must be some kind of weird accent that you are having. Yes. I do declare. <laughs> well, uh, I, the faster we get these packed up, the faster you will get your horse. I'll wander over and give him a hand. Yeah, most kind things... Are, yeah, same. Most things have been kind of packaged into crates and bags that they just need to be loaded into the wagons. And um, the the attitudes of the other people that were dancing, they kind of lighten up a little bit more and they are now slapping, you know, on the back and thank you for your help. And yeah, they are very uh, grateful uh, that you are lending this hand. Um, about five, five minutes goes by quick. Everything's in. Horses are... Uh, saddled. I, I don't think they have saddles. They just have like the the rigging for the reins to be hooked up into the yoke. I think that's a term. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and they are now hooked into the the two two horses per uh, wagon. Uh, I, and Stanimir, I I am ready when you are. Do we know how far Barovia is? It is not not far. I don't think of, we as we as characters ever uh, heard that, right? Um, no, you yeah. have never you 
I, I would wager it's safe to say that none of you have heard the name Barovia before. I didn't think so, but I figured I'd ask. I mean, session one and all, you gotta get what you can. <laughs> yeah, so you have not. You you wouldn't have any history, uh, any recall of, of that name before. Okay. Uh, I've traveled pretty extensively around these parts. There's no Barovia nearby, as it were. <laughs> Well, it's, it is kind of nestled within a couple of bigger cities, and it's easy to miss. It's like water deep. Well, uh, mm. it's a different story. Well, I, he, is, he is going to, if you are ready, I am ready, and he's going to climb up the little steps up into the, the carriage and get ready to, to push on. Two others take post on the other two wagons and they're now kind of circling them and uh, getting onto the main road. Uh, you should, uh, we would not move fast, but you should keep up. And they start and they're now on the road heading uh, away from Daggerford. How long, I, I two questions. How long do you think this trip would take? Is this like an overnight trip? Is this a DM question or is this a... Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, they didn't say and you wouldn't know. Okay. Um, and then are these like covered wagons? Yeah, they're or? like a barrel top, like the old Conestoga wagons that head out to the west, you know. Okay. Uh, Bull is going to uh, misty step on one of them and just kind of make a little bed. <laughs> on the top? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. On, on like the very top, on like yes, the canvas. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so in the uh, in the middle of one of these wagons, kind of there are like pieces of ribbing that kind of go across. In the middle of one, there's now this dimple <laughs> that is pushing down into the the wagon. Uh, you do feel a uh, like a little a poke on, on your on your tuchus as you were there, but nothing nothing violent, just like. A yeah. Yeah, he'll plank a little bit to make it seem like it's just, like, water or something. <laughs> and for that brief moment uh, that you're holding this plank and working the core and gauging it, uh, that dimple does go away. <laughs> uh, how is everybody else uh, walking or making this? Is there room in the wagons? So there are, there are 12 total people, so that's nine. There are three You'd have to split up. They're kind of uh, evenly dispersed among the wagons. There are three people in the back with one person on the front. There's a seat up front, and then there is some room in the back, but you couldn't all fit in one. If it makes Avi feel better, Myrna would definitely be walking alongside the caravan, so there's one less body. Um, and I will say that the first place we come to, I would have, or the first person I ran into on the road, I would have uh, written a little note to the Duchess and given the person some coin to deliver it to her. All right. Um, Something along the lines of, like, we have decided to personally escort these people away from your lands, and we will be back later to collect our dues. Okay. Uh, are, are you doing this sleight of hand, or are you just chicken scratch? Oh, no, just the it? first person I run into on the road, take a second, hand them the note, and then continue following Okay. Through. I was speaking more as in writing of the note. Do you care who sees? Do you... okay. Yeah. Right. Not doing yeah. anything. I'm not writing anything That's... negative yep. about them. But... Okay. Yes, yeah, so you write this note. Um, you haven't met anybody yet, but... Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Avi, Cass? I'm going to get in the first wagon okay. I can get in. I will probably stick on the ground and walk along with one of the wagons. Okay. Zircon? I'll get in where I can fit in. I'm not walking. <laughs> all right uh yeah so you guys will say uh avi you're in the middle one and then zircon you're in the back one and then uh you have bull you have misty stepped onto the front one so we got one person in each Cass and uh myrna you are walking um and they're they're not moving fast you can keep pace and about 15 20 minutes goes by as you're moving south down uh, this road, away from Daggerford, away from their camp, the fire was extinguished. We are practicing safe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Only you can prevent forest fires. Yeah. 
that is I'm not trying to joke with the the mass devastation in Australia uh, but so we practice safe fire etiquette and they're moving um, in about 15 20 minutes in Myrna you do see uh, a lone a lone rider uh, coming uh, past you oh, wait wait I would like to offer your services wait what, what? yes are you, and he'll, he kind of holds up his horse. Are you heading to Pegaford? I, I was going to post up there for the night, yeah. Perfect. Would you be willing to deliver a message to the Duchess for me? Is that like, uh... Is she at the inn? What? Well, she's the Duchess of Pegaford. Like the head honcho? It's like the Duchess, yes. Oh. Well, big time. I guess, uh, how could I say no to that? Uh, if you were to deliver this note, um, and I will give this person a note with one gold, um, and tell her that Myrna Elisan sends her best regards, she will uh, perhaps treat you to something nice. Uh, I can do that, and thank you for the gold, and he puts the gold in his mouth and kind of bites down and puts the uh, the note in his pocket. Is that it? This is it, thank you. All right, and he he uh, giddies on up out of there. Lone uh, Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are, are continuing walking. Um, everybody in passengers have kind of like cur- curled up within the wagons and, and are going down for the night. Um, any anything you want to say or do? Uh, we got kind of a montage. If nobody wants to RP anything, if, well, I mean, I, if I people think... are sleeping, I'll sleep in mine. Okay. I think Bull would have used his forgery kit to draw like a picture on top of the the canvas of like the the old man and him telling the fire story um, <laughs> and then I think probably would use prestidigitation to heat up like the spot that he's laying on and then just go to bed <laughs> so there's this nice gentle glow above <laughs> the three that are in your wagon um, and <laughs> just because it's cool it kind of illuminates the the canvas and you can see the outline of your drawing from underneath like you're looking through nice you can see the silhouettes um yeah it it looks pretty good it's you could tell it's uh it's stanimir their their father okay any anything else any uh i'm gonna go ahead and do my my usual night ritual which is uh pulling out a uh a flask uh pulling the water from it using shape water and creating like a little ice bed and then covering my uh my stuff over it and then tucking in and heading to sleep that wait are you like making an ice bed and floating next to the wagon i'm not not floating (laughs) just kind of the wagons have not stopped they oh they've not stopped yeah yeah. yeah. okay maybe not that yeah yeah (laughs) i was like that's really cool Bull, Bull's going to sleep up on top as it's kind of the wagon going okay. along. I'll probably jump into one of the front seats and do the same then. Just okay. literally have an ice like covering along the back there. Okay. Yeah, so you're in the same wagon as Zircon. Zircon's in the back. You're up in the front next to one of the drivers. Um, and yeah, you kind of like ice the seat around him and he, you could, he visibly scoots over <laughs> and uh, gets a nice separation. Stuffs a blanket in between you. Yeah, probably smart. <laughs> All right. Uh, any anybody else? I probably would have walked until late, and then um, on the last wagon, just kind of hopped up on the end and kind of sat along the side so I could fall asleep looking out the back of the wagon to keep my eye out. Okay. Yeah, and after about an hour or so, you know, people are starting to nestle in, and you guys are doing your thing. The wagons do pull off to the side of the road uh, and standing there. Well, this is where we will stay for the night. No sense in unloading. We will leave very early in the morning. 
but I, I sleep tight, everyone. And he kind of crawls into the back of that front wagon. And as do the other drivers of the wagons, they get in and they kind of nestle in. Um, and night starts, the, the moon is fully up now, kind of giving a little bit of illumination. It's not a full moon, but it's enough to kind of, you know, you can see uh, past your hand a little bit. Um, uh, the, the woods go, as you guys are all kind of settling in, the woods do kind of go quiet, like the crickets and any sort of like rustlings of uh, the nocturnal animals kind of grows down and the air starts to uh, get a little chill in it. Um, um, Cass, you are not affected by this chill that is kind of washing over everybody else. You can see people are pulling up their blankets up tight and kind of pulling their collars up and, and cutting some of the breeze that is starting to come around them. Um, there is, with this chill coming in, there is a mist that is starting to roll in around you and it and it is it seems to be centered on you like it is coming in from all sides and it is starting to come in towards you it's very thick in the air and it seems to go up 20 30 feet so it's it's almost like this wall of fog and mist that is coming and closing in around you turning the trees into what are these gray ghosts that are kind of arms and and their branches are kind of creeping in and out and then they get engulfed and then um they 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 disappear and it totally this mist totally comes in this fog totally comes in and, and engulfs all of you and for a brief second things go gray things go uh, almost senseless, like it, you, you've you've cut off any sound, any kind of feel or touch. Uh, the the wood that you were laying on in the back of the the wagon, the canvas on top that was once heated by prestidigitation, is gone for a moment. In your uh, bowl, you're almost free floating there for a second, and then the mist pulls back, and you are all down, standing now on a road with no wagons around you. How, so yeah. how long are you in like the gray mist? It's, uh, it felt like a while, like it could have been, you know, five minutes, but it was, it was a pretty quick time. Just that, that moment of <clears throat> like life almost flashing before your eyes. Like it feels like it's been a while, but it, it happens relatively quick in real time. But in your head space, it's kind of like, a shock almost i think in that time i would have tried to produce cast produce flame to try and light okay. whatever's around me okay yeah and as you as you do that you were in the front wagon yeah middle or the I think middle wagon front yeah that's true that is correct sir you're there and you you uh you're kind of curled up how would you sleep there's not a lot of room so you can't like sprawl out but you are yeah it would have been tight to just okay. wherever. Okay, yeah, and, and as this, this fog comes in and into the wagon and, and engulfs you, in your hand, are you doing it in your hand? Yeah. Yeah, you light it up, and it's almost like turning your brights on in the fog. It's just, it, it turns that dark gray that is dense into this bright, almost white, and it, it's, it's blinding you for a minute, minute and there's, there's nothing, usually, like, if you would do that, you would set the canvas on fire, or you would that something would catch a flame, but nothing is around you in that instant except that bright gray light now. And then and you keep it up for that 10 seconds and it just dissipates and you're, you are standing now. So all five of you are standing in the center of this road. It looks a lot like the same road outside Daggerford. The trees are a little bit taller a little bit uh, tighter than what was outside of Daggerford, but you, there are no wagons to be found. There is no Stanimir, no horses, how, just you. How far did we travel? Because this does look We're not getting different. paid for this. I thought we were traveling for hours. All right, who's playing tricks? One of you? Well, did you give us wine? No, but I think there might have been something in that uh, wine, Myrna. <clears throat> well, I did not drink the way. So, how do I see what you see? Mighty fine question. Is that a uh, son of a bitch? He took the horses! 
Really? That's that's your focus right now. I, t- to be fair, yeah, that's the back of my mind. I was concerned as well. The good news is I did catch a rider on the way and managed to get into to the Duchess. So I suppose if we start our way back now, it may take a little longer than I thought, but uh, this is an interesting turn of events. Interesting is a word for it. Well, creepy is another. Is there, so what is around us? Good thing you ask, Avi. I was just going to say, with your uh, passive perception, you see south in the same direction that you would, it feels like you were heading. You see up ahead, uh, the the road almost stops. Not stops, but it, it dead ends. And you see a like a blackened wall of a, of a, a shadow there. It's a big block. And it's probably... 300, 400 yards down there. Well, uh, we should probably move. I mean, looking south, there's not, there's maybe a building. There could be something there. Yeah, the bad feeling I mean, about this. Do we need to find the wagons? I mean, I'm concerned. They're just gone, right? Yeah. Not exactly a normal turn of events, huh? We didn't straight fall out, did we? I mean, nobody's <clears throat> hurt. So. Nothing hey. apart from the usual. Does everybody have their stuff? Yeah, do we? Yeah, yeah you have all, all, all your belongings that were on you are with you. Does the sky look right? If I look up, is it the stars I'm used to seeing up above? Uh, yeah, you do see stars. Um, if you want to give me a nature... What would we say that would be nature check if you're looking at um, like constellations and such? Sounds hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want to give me a nature check to see if you can, and any anybody else can do this too if they they want. Sure, I'll jump in on that. My nature's okay. good. Uh, four. So I see stars. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you see a bunch of stars, um, and you see the trees that are kind of lining this this pathway um but yeah you you it kind of it could be daggerford could be just the other way you, you can't really tell hmm. Cass? i rolled uh a natural 20 on that so Kibiru. nice um <laughs> you cannot recognize any constellations that would be um typical to the sword coast there's there's nothing um, familiar familiar in the sky and as you look at the trees as you're kind of scanning the whole area and looking down at the trees uh, the trees are a different make these are um, they're evergreen trees but they are different there is a uh, kind of just a different <clears throat> makeup to them that they are not the same ones that were along the roads of Daggerford outside Daggerford so from what you can tell, you are no longer on the Sword Coast. Mm. I'll relay this to everybody else and just kind of say, wherever the hell we are, it's definitely not near the Sword Coast. Only one Having way this, forward, right? You said there was a building up ahead, yes. Uh, I think, um, hard to make out. No sense in standing in the road like fools. Got a point there. And at, at this point, it's probably like one, two o'clock. In the in the morning at this point, yeah, it's kind of like past the normal bedtime after dinner and the walk down there and you know the, the few hours of riding. So it is getting late. Your eyes are kind of blurry. And, but uh, if you're heading that way, second handout of the night. Ooh. I like this one. I like oh, this one. Boy, so shit. these are as you are approaching. Uh, the sunlight isn't shining down on them, but as you get closer, you see this wall that kind of buries itself into the forest and into the the hillside and flanking each side is are these two gigantic carved statues of uh, plated warriors Um, heads are removed you don't see them but uh, they are they are standing each side of the gate 
and the gate are is two gigantic double doors that go 100 feet to not 100 feet let's go 40 feet into the air and do these, i this recognize is, um, any of the symbolism or is it too dark for that uh yeah, like I said, there's no sunlight that is okay. bouncing just... off of it. So you you can catch the the hard lines of the of the statues, but any kind of intricate details, you would ha definitely have to get closer. Well, we're walking towards them, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so I mean, as we get close enough, I probably would want to get close to inspect because I mean, we don't okay. know where we are yet. So yeah. So as you are getting closer and. Once you get within about 50, 60 feet of them, you see that the heads of these statues are on the ground at their feet, kind of uh, engulfed by weeds. As you are approaching, you do get, it, it is eerie. And are you looking for specific, um, what's the word? Insignias, I'm, I'm Insignias. looking for religious symbols, anything that stands out is this is not just like the curve of the whatever gotcha yeah you could give me a investigation check as you are you i imagine you're now at the feet of these and as you're looking up you know i want to i want to help by producing flame to help cast light so it's easier to see all right i'll i'll give you advantage yes is the door that giant door shut in front of us is it open like the the giant doors are ajar no they're not ajar they're a door uh, they are open. It's a dirty 20. Ooh, Ooh all right. Yes. Yeah, with love that advantage. Um, you don't see any insignia on here. They are just like a blank template almost. They are, even the face themselves aren't, the features are there, the nose, the eyes, the ears, but they are kind of, it's just like an everyman, a gray man kind of face that you've, you've seen a hundred times before. It's there's nothing that is standing out about these specifically. I will Sense. relay that information to the group, and I will say, does anyone else think that is funny that they would spend all the time and the resources to build such magnificent statues and then make them so average? It's a little bit odd, yeah. It's kind of things are made for ego. It's kind of weird not to put your own stamp on it. Exactly, my sauce. Oh, they also could have been uh, taken off, like the the heads that are on the ground. Any, any type of symbol, I imagine, by whoever took over this place. Perhaps. Can I? Just... I is it, sorry, go. No, go ahead. Is there anybody like watching us? Are there lights on uh, by this? Giant <clears throat> structure. You can give me a perception check. Hello. Anyone else that wants to kind of now that you're closer to the the gates wants to take a look specifically. Uh, yeah, I would too. Um, do I get advantage on? Yeah. Uh, no, that's uh, I got a five. That'd be oh, a fourteen man. for me. Five, fourteen, eleven, natural twenty, natural. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, Cass. And uh, Myrna, you, do. well, you're kind of just like enamored with the face for what, even though Myrna said it's like there's nothing special about it, you're just trying to figure out there's got to be something there. You're kind of <laughs> tied in down there. But Cass and, and Myrna, you don't hear anything. It is, again, that eerie quiet that was right before the mists engulfed you. It is almost like a deadened of the senses, like you got your ears plugged a little bit. You do see that the mist around you and that is sitting at the top of the, of the wall and the gates. And as you can kind of peek through the doors, it kind of dissipates. It gets a little uh, um, less dense on the other side. Now, I've got an idea. Bull's going to pull out. Uh, he's got a, a, a horn in his pack. <laughs> uh, yeah, when like, you do that, I'm going to, like... Try and not let you blow on the horn. <laughs> same, same. I'm totally Just trying to get the horn out of one again. moment. <laughs> uh, that that's a terrible idea. We have no idea where we are. Who's around? What's around us? Bold. Do you want this to be contested, or are you? 
are you giving it? <laughs> um. <laughs> what? Well, no, I'll I'll stop. Them. You might as well. All right. Yeah, it could be fun. Yeah. You never know. Okay. Contest it? Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> um, I guess that would be strength or dexterity check. Well, I'm gonna go dex, and then strength checks by whoever is stopping him. Okay. Oh yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think I might. Thirteen. Wasn't very good. Twenty-one. So is everybody stopping him? <laughs> yeah, you are being. Uh, I also okay. have twenty-one. I'm glad. <laughs> so. I wrote, Ty- I rolled a thirteen. Oh. So, how how did what help me out here, at other DMs at the table? How would we? Who do we rule in favor of? We have a tie between uh, Myrna and it's a roll off. What's do it? Well, I, I would have either, like done another roll, or I would have seen who has the higher modifier. But they were not doing the same stats, so yeah. Let's do another roll, uh, right. just between uh, Bull and and Myrna. If it were DM versus player, I would just roll in favor of the player. Sure. But. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think I got this. What'd you get? Nat twenty. <laughs> <laughs> I got a 22. <laughs> so, Bull, what's your modifier? Nat 20 uh, it's plus. plus. It's plus three, so it'll give me... 23. All right. All oh, right, my goodness. Rascal, you oh. little bastard. It's like, ah! <laughs> bull, <laughs> no, you, no. You take, <laughs> you take your little bullhorn out, and you, oh you're going to give it give it a toot, and everybody yeah. kind of, like, jumps on you, and Myrna, you come in the first time, and you knock it away. It only gets a little whoop. One note comes out of there. You knock it away, but bull, you're able to like get it out, and you're kind of being tackled and draped by everyone around you. And you're able to now. God damn it! Listen, this is a good a idea. Blow. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you guys are effed now. Um... <laughs> This is never so, a great guys, we won D and D. Yeah, we beat Curse of Strahd. That was it. This is all. <laughs> this is all bonus. Um, so, you do. After that, you kind of everybody. I imagine the party's like looking at you, Bull. Like, are you crazy? Um, and is everybody kind of sitting still? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Avi, you hear this first. On the other side. In a distance, you do hear the howling of uh, what would be like wolves. I don't even know what to say. I'm not. I'm gonna be speechless as this happens. <laughs> Wait. So you're the only one that hears this, and you're being quiet. <laughs> hears, well, you eventually he would. First. He hears it first, and then it kind of starts to echo and and push through. <laughs> okay. And everybody else is now breaking, almost like breaking that senseless fingers in your ear kind of you the plug has been pulled we're all now you you hear the wolves is in the distance from, is it coming from inside the gate or outside the gate there's a weird kind of sensory distortion you can't quite tell but it is ahead of you you can't tell if it's like they're flying in, wolves yeah like just, <laughs> <laughs> but it is it is in front of you as you are staring at the gate but there is some distance between the sound and where you are and where you heard it. And I'll say, Zircon, you're, I would imagine you're kind of at the back of this group, um, being kind of the, uh, the more hesitant of everyone. Um, as you look down at your feet, you see the mist and the fog has now started to engulf and is like right at your heels. And this, this dense wall, that same wall that engulfed you in the caravan is now like horseshoeing you and is right behind you on your heels. Not not pushing past you, it has stopped, but it is, it is there. Yeah, I still have my flame out. Like, uh, I don't think we're hammer. being corralled that way. There's mysterious forces here, and we just invited them. The gold. <laughs> now I've got another plan. <laughs> hear me? <laughs> no. No. Well, do we go meet 
Because your first plan just seemed like, I want to get drunk and hang out with the people <laughs> trying to kick off the Duchess's property. So I don't, I don't know where this plan's going, but I feel like it's the wrong way. <laughs> well, we can get on top of that that gate up there. I can Missy step up, I can throw a rope down, we can hike up. Well, you can just... That sounds like an okay plan. Don't push. Has anyone actually tried to get through? It's already open. Who, do we want to go forward? Yeah. It's like, why would you hop over and then go down and waste? I, I don't understand. Well, ball goes well, I think first. You need, to, you need to learn some things from this person. Yeah. I was just trying to evade the wolves <laughs> that I think I've heard at this point. <laughs> well, I say ball goes first. <clears throat> yeah, I, I can get behind that, to be fair. <laughs> I kind of want to nudge you through the door, Bull. Um, if everyone else is being hesitant, I will just shake my head and walk through the gate. Because it's pretty obvious there's nowhere to go the direction we came. And hesitation's kind of left me at this juncture, and now I'm just like, well, it's time to just... <laughs> Let's just go. It's time to just deal with it. <laughs> so, Zircon, as you move forward and pass one of your party mates, that fog now moves forward and is now behind, I would assume, Cass at this point. And, is, and now just kind of close that ground. Well, it looks like you're correct with the corralling. Onwards and upwards, I guess. And I'll, I'll follow Zircon through the gate. Same. I'll go ahead and uh, move forward as well, yeah. Because there is no way Bull is lifting me. <laughs> <laughs> Fireman's carry. Uh, so as you all kind of go through the gate, those mists are like on your heels and, and ushering you and corralling you. And as the last person steps through that gate, just, just the iron breaks the rust that was kind of built around the hinges. The iron gate just <laughs> closes behind you. And that mist stops, and it's kind of clear uh, ahead of you. Uh, in here, it's the same kind of towering trees. Uh, the tops are kind of uh, lost in that heavy gray mist, um, blocking out any sort of starlight or moonlight that's coming down. Something you'll notice with these trees, now that the, the woods are kind of closer to the road, is the tree trunks are almost unnaturally close to one another. It's hard to see a straight line through the forest and it, it, there's no there's no path. It, they're just so close together. Um, and there's, again, just the silence of like, uh, of a forgotten grave, but there's also this feeling of unvoiced screams that are kind of wanting to pour out of these uh, these these forests, this, these woods that surround this road that you are on. And with that, I think we're going to stop for the night and call that session one of Curse of Strahd. Uh, oh, you guys are in Barovia. Uh, outside knowledge, you guys are in Barovia, uh, inside the gates, and that's where we will pick up next time. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, watching everybody sitting at this table for powering through some of the technical difficulties. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm excited to, to push forward. We got through <laughs> through the hump of session one and it's only going to get better um, as you guys get to know each other. We kind of like threw you in, so <laughs> we're, we're there. Uh, <laughs> I love the uh, the agitations between the characters already but let me let me wrap up housekeeping and i'll let you all say your goodbyes uh we are featherfall tabletop um you can find us everywhere at featherfall tabletop this is this curse of strahd module is um sponsored by roll 20 you can find them at roll 20.net um and yeah so check them out uh that the handouts are all provided from that uh, battle maps when they come up are there uh we are also sponsored by Found Familiar and Skull Splitter. Links down below. Use Featherfall in, in checkout to save yourself some uh, some of that cash. Uh, we got a one shot tomorrow night, Monday, January fifth. If you want in on those one shots, check out the Discord link below. Let us know you want in. Gods we know, DM'd by Adam, will be on Tuesday. 
and we should have a table talk on this Thursday. Uh, tons of uh, packed week of, of uh, streaming here. Um, again, thank you everybody for choosing to spend your Sunday evening here watching us um, play Curse of Strahd. And again, players, thank you for uh, sharing a table with me. I appreciate it. Uh, if anybody want, you can plug yourself. I, I don't have any witty thing to say, but if uh, you want to go in that same order that we went at the beginning, plug yourself. Where can they find you? Um, and say goodbye. Cool. Cool. Can uh, you yeah. first, man? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Bearded Baymax on Twitter. Um, I also hang around in the uh, Featherfall Discord quite a bit. Yeah, now and then. So, yeah. Come say hey. Great to have you. Yep, Bob. I'm, I'm Bob uh, at BillyZ6219 on Twitter or at Featherfall Tabletop. I do manage both of those, unfortunately. They are very difficult to keep up. Um, I do hang out most of my time in the Featherfall Tabletop Discord. Come hang out with us. Uh, we chat about nonsense all day long and all of the good stuff that we have. Dax? Uh, I'm Dax. I'm not on social media except for in Discord, kind of. Um, I spend most of my time in the Open Core Adventure uh, server, but I also do pop into Featherfall every once in a while and get to participate in a couple one shots. Um, the big thing that's coming up for me is uh, I'm going to, I am a game master for a podcast called Roads Uncharted using the Genesis RPG system. And uh, that's going to be launching. Uh, we're looking at March, so look out for that. Nice, awesome. Thanks, Dex. Uh, Adam. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, Tuesday night, gods we know, six thirty Pacific, or we might start at six. Um, we'll tell you. Um, <laughs> Adam Islamis on everything, um, and I think next week we're back with Stroud. Sunday. Yeah, the twelfth. Woo! I, okay, that's all I, got. I should say oh, these will be every other week except for these first two uh, right, some on. scheduling stuff so we will play the 12th but then we're off for two weeks or something like that uh, we'll make sure the info gets out there uh, but yeah we'll be back here Sunday uh, I'm Jason I don't really have any plugs uh, other than you know roll 20 dot featherfall tabletop find our discords go go visit all of our sponsors uh, we appreciate you guys that have taken the time to to listen to us play. I had a I had a blast. So appreciate you running the game for us. All right, that's everybody. Uh, again, you can find me at two socks oh five on Twitter. Uh, I hang out in the Featherfall Discord quite a bit. Uh, I was going to say we had an awesome talk about figgy pudding and baked Alaska not too long ago. Uh, if you want, you know that kind of nonsense, uh, get in there. Who knows what we'll come up with next? But. Again, I can't say it enough. If you spent your evening watching us and our shenanigans, thank you so much. Uh, we truly appreciate it. And we will be back on the 12th 